This is video two on EndNote for Mac. We've opened a sample library which has 66 references in it. We're going to get it talking to Microsoft Word. And when Microsoft Word talks to EndNote, it's called Cite While You Write. When you've installed EndNote, you notice that Word now has an EndNote tab up on the ribbon. It has very handy buttons such as insert citation and edit and manage citations. You'll be using those two buttons over and over again. Let's put an EndNote reference at the end of the first paragraph, but we need a space so it doesn't get all overcrowded. I'll insert citation and I'm looking for something by an author called Alan. There it is, an article from 2004. I'll insert it. EndNote has put the author in the year and down the bottom started creating a bit of a bibliography for me. How nicely typed is that? Let's do that again. End of the second paragraph, space, insert a citation. There's another author called Holland. Yep, that's the one. There's a bit of a preview pane there. So it's, it's getting that preview from over in EndNote. And it even tells me it's got the name of the sample library there at the bottom of the window. So that one was a little more complicated. There's some longish looking authors names there. So I'm really glad EndNote typed that up for me. We can get a little more sophisticated now, but before we do, how about we have a look at that bibliography? Most of my students like it to be called a references list. So on a Mac, there's a very clear configure bibliography button. It's a little more obscure on a PC. We go straight over to the layout tab and it's very small, but we change the word bibliography to references list. And while we're here, it's just my personal preference, but I like a one and a half space after each reference. So a little bit of a gap. Be guided by your supervisor or your publisher as to what format you should be using there. How about at the end of the first sentence of the second paragraph, doesn't really matter where, as long as you've got a space, got somewhere to put this, we're going to put two citations at the same, same time. I'll click insert citation. You don't have to search for an author or even a title, you could search for a concept. So I'm looking for anything with bats, could be in the author, could be in the keywords, could be anywhere. I want Chu 2007 and if I hold the command key and go down I can also select Smith 2007. Because I held the command key they're both highlighted and I can insert two at the same time to back up this one statement that I've made. I've made a statement, I've backed it up with two different works that give me evidence for that. Oh, I've changed my mind. I don't want Smith there anymore. If you change your mind, and you will change your mind over time, go up to Edit and Manage Citations. Find the one that you want to remove, highlight it, click the cog and remove citation. You'll still need to click OK for that to happen. So Chu and Moss and Smith have become Chu and Moss. What about some page numbers? How about Holland? We'll put some page numbers for that one. Edit and manage, highlight it, and be 
because we're on the APA style, note up there in Word it says APA, we can type pages 4-9. And it's added PP 4-9. So Word and EndNote talking to each other have looked and gone, aha, you're using APA, we use the symbol PP dot. If we were on another referencing style like Vancouver, the result might be different. I think I mentioned earlier, if you don't find the style that you use, ask us, we have them on file, especially the Australian law one. What about, oh, I meant to say with the page numbers, if you try that the pages field and it doesn't work, put the pages in as a suffix, type them by hand if you need to. Type the P dot, whatever the, the right thing is for your reference style. What about a prefix? I'll go back to edit manage and that Allen one, I actually want to say as seen in, you, there might be different ways that you say things in the department where you study. As seen in, now, those words ran together, so I'll have to go back. You do get used to getting it right, and after a while you won't have to keep going back and making little adjustments. So I've put a little space on the end of that, much better. What about, what can we do next? Emery, we have a statement. This has been well demonstrated by Emery. Let's put Emery's work in there. Easiest thing will just be search Emery. There's a few, I was thinking of the 2006 one. Insert. Now it doesn't look right. This has been well demonstrated by Emery, brackets, Emery 2006. Depending on what you're studying, you may not be allowed to say the author twice like that. It, it certainly, it looks untidy. So I'll go back to edit and manage and oh, see how it still says as seen in. That's because I've got Alan highlighted. I need to highlight Emery and Format gets changed to exclude the author. And OK. This has been well demonstrated by Emery 2006. We've done prefix, suffix. There's one more thing we can do. Whoops, my finger slipped. Wow. Come back word. Edit and manage citations. Sometimes, no, actually that, that was it. That was it, that was excluding the author. We have covered all the basics. When it comes time, if you need to put chapters together, check out the help guides we've got. If we have a little look. over here on the library subject guide for EndNote. We've got all sorts of tips, including how to put chapters together. The reason we give advice on that is there's all sorts of computer code behind there. So if I click a citation, it takes me down the references list. The references list is grey. That's telling you, if you see a typo or something, don't just backspace over it. There's a whole heap of computer code behind there that pertains to EndNote. If you see something you want to change, like, Alan, you've misspelt it, you use the button called Go to EndNote, find Alan, fix the reference, 
let's say it should be spelt A L L A N. You need to move off that record. Then you can find the button for go to Word. And the change hasn't happened. There's a button called Update Citations and Bibliography. That'll get the latest information from EndNote. And now it's retyped the word Allen. Different spelling. There's just one thing left to do, and that is when you have carefully put the chapters together using our instructions and you want to send this off to a supervisor or publisher, you'll go to Tools and you'll make a copy, a plain text copy that doesn't have all that grey, doesn't have code behind there. Publishers don't like to see all that code. They don't want to muck up their software. They don't need to see all your EndNote workings. They just want to see the final product. And this is the final product. Nothing turns grey. Nothing sends you down to the bottom. It's now just a word processing document. So just as you're sending it off to the publisher, if you see a mistake, you can just type it on the spot. It's just word processing. Let's have a look at a recap of what we've learned today. We've started with a brand new EndNote library. The optimum number of EndNote libraries is one. That saves Word knowing which one it's talking to, or if you're opening an RIS file from ProQuest, it knows which EndNote library to open in. One is the best number of EndNote libraries. And you only need one because you can do so many things like set up groups rather than start a new EndNote library every time you have a new interest. We typed a record by hand because it's good practice to know where the full stops and commas and things go. It helps you understand how EndNote works. We went over to a database and created an RIS file and then imported that into EndNote. We brought in a whole folder full of files, 14 files, they all came in at once. And we looked at what happens if you're not paying attention, if you've got your caps lock on when it shouldn't be, if you bring in a record from a database and they have left their caps lock on when they should have, or if they've put a comma where it shouldn't be. You need to keep your eyes open and fix little problems as you find them so that you don't have to worry the week your thesis is being submitted. And so important, you need to compress your library regularly. The definition of regular depends on the student or the researcher. For me, I might do it once a month. And I save those compressions somewhere safe, like an external hard drive, never the cloud. And we take good care of file management. EndNote is a very sophisticated software. And so it has a very sophisticated structure of files. Get your file name, get your library name right from the start so you don't have to change that. And get it saved in the right place, like documents, EndNote, right from the start, so you're not moving things around and maybe mucking them up. This is what we've built, a, an, a Word document that has little fields that are grey because it's all coded, it's all talking to EndNote. You make a change in EndNote, it makes the change in Word. And our subject guide for EndNote is your go-to place. 24 hours a day, you can go and look up an answer for a question. If you don't find an answer, certainly contact us. You can have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. We can do some screen sharing if you're not on campus. And if you stump us, we can go to Clarivate, the EndNote company, and we can get an answer from them. I hope you've enjoyed the session. If you've got any questions about EndNote, do let us know.